mandarins. We're looking at the honey mercot, folks. Oh, I just dribbled it myself. Oh, bugger. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That's what you're going to be looking at. I'm enjoying my mandarin, folks. How are we going? And I know you're loving Alex's place, so we're going to go back there tomorrow. So keep following, because we've got lots of more garden folks coming up. But I've had a lot of emails coming through, and don't mind my dribble. I mean, I just made a mess of myself. You don't have to look down there either, you know that. <laughs> but I've been getting a lot of emails regarding citrus trees. People are losing their leaves. Others are worried about citrus gall wasp. Got a little bit of leaf curl, all that sort of stuff going on. I'll quickly repeat what you need to do as far as feeding them. And what I do is put the superfood with the black green and just top it up with a bit of planting mix and give it a good soaking. Now this tree hasn't been watered today. We got up to 30 degrees and you can see the leaf is starting to cup there now, but that's not too bad. That's not that bad. Uh, if I look around to all the other ones and we'll quickly have a look at them, all the others are good. Only this one here actually needs a bit more water than usual. So we're gonna give that a water and look at the juices. Oh, just dripping out everywhere. So this is our honey mercot. Mm. Spins nice too, by the way. Come over here. What just happened? <laughs> Seriously, the tree's just here. It took me this long to get to it. Anyway, we're talking citrus gall wasp. Folks, they're the lumps that appear on your branches of your tree. Lots of you got that problem because I'm getting lots of emails about it. Now you can cut them off if you like, but the ones, if you look closely to them, the ones where they're swollen up on the branch and you see little pitted holes, if they've got a hole in them, it's been discarded. It means the actual insect has emerged from the, uh, the gall itself. So those ones you can leave on the tree. It's more so on the new growth. If you start to see on the saplings, all these little new branches, a bit of swelling developing, you need to cut those off because they will mature and then progress out and try and reinfest the tree. But we're going to give you a couple of tips here on how to control them from attacking your tree again. You've got two things you can use. One is a spray and the other one's a trap. Now this is fruition citrus gall wasp trap folks. Now citrus gall wasp itself is a tiny tiny little insect that flies around. It doesn't fly well, it gets carried by wind mostly. So if your neighbor's got the problem and the wind blows in your garden direction, it'll more than likely infest your tree as well. So you can use the trap and that's the first option you have. Now this trap has been specifically designed for citrus gall wasp. There are many traps out there in the market but none of them have got the patented lure like this one here which is and has been trialled and tested commercially to attract, capture and destroy the actual female egg laying wasp. A bit more information on the citrus gall wasp itself. Now they normally mate from spring to early summer because our weather has been so slow to heat up, Victoria that is, but in other areas of Australia they would be more than likely travelling around from springtime. That's the adults. And so they emerge, they mate and they take up to five to seven days to lay up to a hundred eggs if not more under the green bark of the tree and that's how the swelling develops. Now because in Victoria our weather has been so late to heat up we've still got plenty of time to set traps up to lure and catch the insect now the pack itself comes with two lures two traps and two cards and this is what it looks like when you install it together so you've got a sticky card inside with the cage on the outside to stop birds getting caught up in it and you insert the lure itself this one here so what you do is you cut the end off and I might just do that and hang it up in my tree because everybody wants to see it happening in real time. So just cut that off like that. We open it up, don't open it up all the way and keep the side down that's not cut off to the bottom side of the actual trap. Just fold it in there carefully, put your card inside, peel off the actual covering on it and put your cage over the top and seal it tight. I'm not going to hang this up yet because I haven't got a framework. Now, why I'm saying that is because it works for up to a, a tree up to three meters in height, 
and anything larger than that you should put two traps on the north, south, east and west. Now for small trees like this folks, you can hang it in the tree if you like like that there, but if you can get yourself a garden post and just hang it on the outside of it so that way you're actually luring the fly or the wasp to the trap rather than to the tree because sometimes they might fly through the tree and land on the tree before it gets to the trap itself and then it starts laying again. So this is a great unit, it's the only one in Australia that actually lures, catches and gets rid of your citrus gall wasps. The other one is CGWS which stands for Citrus Gall Wasp Spray. Now we've had this out for a number of years and it works tremendously well and it's actually used for a couple of things. One is to create a barrier shield over your tree by spraying it onto the plant all over it. Never spray the tree when it's in flower. Always spray it after the flowers are finished and make sure you give it a good coating. Now the white shield that's left on the tree is the coat of armour stopping the insect from being able to penetrate into the branch and lay its eggs. What happens is because it's made from kale and clay and seaweed solution added into it as well. When the insect actually lands on the branch, the little particles from the CGWS act like little magnets and they magnetize themselves onto the body of the insect, which suffocates the insect, therefore unable to lay its eggs. It sits there cleaning itself and dies from no oxygen. Pretty sad way to go, folks. Let's bake some. We need three heaped tablespoons in a litre of water. One, two, three and stir until it all dissolves. Now see the discolour of it there? Normally it would go white because CGWS or the powder itself is white but because we've got the seaweed solution in there or the seaweed concentrated seaweed powder you get a, a brownie colour result. Now that at the same time basically feeds your plant because you can do foliar sprays and we recommend you do it on a cool day. Never spray your trees on a hot day. Uh, it's not going to kill the tree but you just don't want to cause any other problems occurring. Next you need a drink bottle like a 1.2 litre bottle like this or a 2 litre bottle. It can be an old water bottle or a soft drink bottle. Recycle it and you pour your solution straight into that. Let's see how good I am. Bit of music please. I'll get the shakes. This is not a good position. Who's directing this film? <laughs> That's worse than a workout. All right. So we've got our drink bottle, and I use my easy hand sprayer, folks. It's the one with the swivel nozzles up and down. This one here's got the extended part on the front there. It's not the short version of it, which dribbles all over your hand when you use it. We've got the extended part, which allows you to get inside the plant a little bit more than usually and spray the underside. Now, it's important when you spray your plants, not just CGWS, which is a great product, in fact, for all plants. And I've got to tell you the second part to this. CGWS is also used to reduce heat stress on citrus trees. So when it gets over 35 degrees or even 40 degrees in some places, the citrus trees stop growing. They actually go backwards. They don't ripen their fruit properly. They don't do anything. They don't actually produce new foliage. They sit there and try and sustain themselves alive. So by spraying this on it, you reduce the heat stress on it, and therefore your trees are more active throughout the entire year rather than just as you see in springtime and in wintertime when it's ripening. So during summertime, when it gets really hot in your region, think about spraying some CGWS. Two, two fronts, one to control the gall wasp and the other one to stop it from going into stress, dropping its all, all its leaves and things like that. So that's it. Let's go and spray. One nozzle up, one nozzle down and we spray. It's more important to get it on the branch than the leaves because that's where the problem occurs but obviously you can't avoid the leaves. And when we say to the point of runoff, this is what we mean. It's got to be dripping like rain's just fallen on the tree and that way you've given it a good coating. Now when that dries up folks, we missed a spot there, when that dries up it's going to dry white or off-white and that's going to show you the indicator as a shield of armour to protect your tree. So if you've got citrus gall wasp, it works great on codling moth, it works great on pear and cherry, it's like too late for that now. It also works great on 
Leaf miner, that's the other one because we do get a coating on the leaves as well. So for all those nasty pests that get out there into your trees and give you a hard time, think of CGWS to control it and the citrus gall wasp trap to hang it around your citrus trees because summer's only just kicked in in Victoria, folks. If you live in Darwin and other states of Australia and it's really warm, lucky you, we're just getting it now. Check it out on our website, vasilisgarden.com and shop before the end of the month to be in the draw to win yourself a $500 garden hamper with lots of goodies for you to take home and enjoy in your garden. Vasilisgarden.com, from me Vasili, Maresi.